I want you to imagine uh, a team of special force operatives making a stealth halo entry from 30,000 feet into hostile territory, somewhere in the Horn of Africa to disrupt the terrorist cell. Uh, in the ensuing firefight, uh, members of this team sustain life-threatening injuries and air evacuation is impossible for the next 72 hours. Uh, this isn't a far-fetched uh, scenario, but a, a reality in the near distant uh, future. So, uh, standard DOD disclosure, uh, this is views of our own and not the official DOD policy. However, we do need to thank the DOD's AMED Advanced Technology Initiative and TATRIC for their research and financial support. So in a review of combat casualties uh, from Operation Enduring and Iraqi Freedom, nine out of 10 soldiers who died from combat injuries did so before reaching a medical care facility. Moreover, about 25% of these warriors had potentially survivable injuries had they received quicker medical care. Now, I have no doubt that combat casualty care is better than ever for our wounded warriors. U.S. wartime mortality in modern warfare is at the lowest point of any prior conflicts. But that 25% shows us that there's still room for improvement. So how do we reduce this percentage? What disruptive technologies can we leverage today for tomorrow's conflicts? We think that robotic telesurgery is that answer. This is the way we perform robotic surgery today. The surgeon sits at the robotic controls console and here's the robot actively engaging with the patient. They're in the same room, they're separated by just a few feet. But imagine if a surgeon could control a robot from 20, 200, 2000 miles away. That's the true potential of robotic telesurgery. The robot is a force multiplier allowing a surgeon to reach patients across a geographic distance, whether it's to a remote field hospital, a humanitarian mission, or even to the front lines of the battlefield. Imagine a, a robotic system contained in an evacuation vehicle, delivering life-saving trauma care from the point of injury, shifting the paradigm of this golden hour to mere minutes. The DOD recognized the transformative potential of robotic telesurgery and since the 1990s has made significant investments in its research and development, including creation of the Da Vinci surgical robot and multiple telesurgical robotic studies. However, all these studies face the same technical challenges and limitations that prevents the use of effective telesurgery today, which is excessive signal latency. So what does signal latency look like in robotic surgery? This is a video of a simple suturing task in normal circumstances, that is, in the absence of any time delay. And what you see are smooth motions, everything's controlled nice and clean. But when we add in three quarters of a second of time delay, which is the latency we would experience if we were operating between Washington DC and Afghanistan, we see that the motions become clumsy. There's overshoot and overcorrection, and all in all, this leads to uh, unsafe surgical environment. We have an open source Da Vinci robot in our uh, robotic laboratory and we applied a microsurgical model to evaluate the effects that signal latency had on surgical performance. And what we saw was with increasing latency, there were longer task completion times and more critically, more numbers of technical errors. So what's our next step? Uh, we are building algorithms using machine learning to enable the robot to learn the surgeon's moves and developing semi-autonomous robotic safety protocols to serve as an autocorrect in situations of excessive signal latency or even signal loss. The robot will filter out unsafe motions and even prescribe safer maneuvers. Because of this multidisciplinary, multi-institutional team that we have assembled, robotic telesurgery is within our reach. So uh, let me end with this, ladies and gentlemen, that you know, future adversaries may change. Uh, tomorrow's challenges may be different, but the mission of the medical corps will always remain the same, which is to deliver world-class care to the men and women of our armed forces anytime, any place. Thank you.